So that's a function of the mitochondria. The next is the ribosomes, not lysosomes, ribosomes. These, these we say they, they are organelles without limiting membrane. These are granular and small dot-like structures. Okay. There are two types of ribosomes. There is ribosomes that are attached to the rough endoplasmic reticulum, and they are all there are those which are free ribosomes that are distributed in the cytoplasm. Okay. However, these ribosomes are called protein factories because of their role in the synthesis of uh, proteins. The messenger RNA, when we, uh, we, when we magnify the ribosomes, it looks like this. Okay. The messenger RNA carries the genetic code uh, for the protein, uh, genetic code for protein synthesis from the nucleus to the ribosomes. So the ribosomes, in turn, will arrange the amino acid into small units of proteins. And ribosomes attached to rough endoplasmic reticulum are involved in synthesis of proteins such as the enzymatic proteins, hormonal proteins, lysosomal proteins, and the proteins of the cell membrane. But the free ribosomes are responsible for synthesis of proteins in hemoglobin, peroxisomes, and the mitochondria. So at the end of the day, we have uh, an amino acids arranged in a particular sequence and forming what we call a protein. So all these mechanisms can be explained at molecular level, but for, for, for physiology, we are interested in knowing that the ribosomes are involved in synthesis of uh, proteins. And then apart from that, we have the cytoskeleton. Okay, cytoskeleton, it is made up of uh, microtubules, um, intermediate uh, filaments. It is also made up of uh, microfilaments. Okay, the cytoskeleton uh, is uh, it's, it's actually a complex network of structures in various sizes that are found within the cytoplasm. Okay, as you can see, it, is, it determines the shape of the cell and it also gives support to the cell. Okay, this diagram shows the cytoskeleton in three dimensions. For example, the microtubule. The microtubules are the straight, okay, are the, are the straight, hollow, and tubular structures. These microtubules are the straight and hollow tubular structures of the cytoskeleton. Their, uh, their main functions is um, determine the shape of the cell. They give structural strength to the cell. They act like conveyor belts. They form the spindle fibers which separate the chromosome during mitosis. They are, they are responsible for movement of centrioles and the complex cellular structures like the like cilia. Okay. And then we have the microfilaments. The microfilaments are long and fine thread-like structures. They are usually made up of uh, proteins called actin and myosin. Okay, and actin is more abundant than myosin. It's a thin filament. And uh, microfilaments are present throughout cytoplasm and mainly in the muscles, muscle cells. Okay, they give structure to the strength of the, uh, strength to the cell. They provide resistance to the cell against pulling forces. They are also responsible for movements, movements like contraction, cytokinesis, and gliding. Okay. And then the other structures are the the intermediate filaments. The intermediate filaments are structures of the cytoskeleton that form a network around the nucleus and extend to the periphery of the cell. Okay, so they help to maintain the shape of the cell. They connect the adjacent cell through desmosomes. So, these are structural integrity. 
of the of this of the cell okay and then we have the nucleus the nucleus is the most prominent and the largest cellular organelles what's the diameter of the nucleus from here to here it has a diameter of about uh, 10 to 22 micro uh, mic micrometers and occupies about 10% of the total volume of the cell. Okay, most cells have only one nucleus. So those are called uninucleated cells. But others, they have many nucleus. Those are called multinucleated cells. Generally, the nucleus is located in the center of the cell. And it is most spherical in shape. Okay. It's most spherical in shape. When you talk of the structure, it has, uh, as you can see here, it has a nuclear member, nuclear envelope. Okay. There is also a nucleoplasm. The more like the the fluid medium or the 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 plasma medium of the nucleus, and also we can see it as uh, chromatin, a nucleolus. Okay. Now let me just talk about the nuclear membrane. The nuclear membrane or the nuclear envelope, it's a double layered and porous in nature. This allows the nucleoplasm to communicate with the cytoplasm. Okay. And then the nucleoplasm, it's a viscous fluid that forms the ground substance of the nucleus. It is similar to the cytoplasm. Okay. And the nucleoplasm surrounds the chromatin and the nucleolus. And then the chromatin, this chromatin, is a, these are thread-like materials made up of large molecules of uh, DNA. The DNA molecules are compactly packed with the help of uh, specialized proteins called histones. Okay. And then within the nu uh, nucleoplasm, we have the chromosomes. Very important, these are rod-shaped nuclear structures that carries a complete blueprint of all the hereditary characteristics of the human, of the species. So a, a chromosome is formed from a single DNA molecule, which is called around histone molecules. Okay, basically this is the nucleus. Oh, I forgot about the nucleolus. The nucleolus, it's a small round granular structure of the nucleus. Each nucleus contains one or more nucleoli. Okay. The nucleolus contains RNA and some proteins, which are similar to those found in ribosomes. The RNA is synthesized by five different pairs of chromosomes and stored in the nucleolus. Later, it is condensed to form the, the it is condensed to form the subunits of ribosomes. All the subunits formed in the nucleolus are transported to cytoplasm through the pores of the nuclear membrane. In the cytoplasm, these subunits fuse to form ribosomes, which play an essential role in the formation of proteins. Okay, so this same nucleus, what's the function? The unique function of this is we can, I can talk about, I can give you six unique functions of the nucleus. One, synthesis of RNA. Two, it controls all the cell activities. That includes metabolism, protein synthesis, growth, and reproduction. Three, formation of subunits of ribosomes. So ribosomes are synthesized by the nucleus, specifically in the nucleola, nucleolus. Four, it sends genetic instruction to the cytoplasm for protein synthesis, uh, synthesis through messenger RNA. Five, it controls the cell division through genes 
six storage of hereditary information in form of genes. Okay, so those are the functions of the nucleus. So when you say DNA, the DNA, it carries the genetic information to the offspring of an organism. So the DNA contains or it forms the chemical basis of heredit hereditary characters. characters. Okay. And the, it contains the instruction for the synthesis of proteins in the ribosomes. Proteins, proteins. I'm talking of proteins, proteins, proteins. Proteins can either be enzymes, can be hormones. Okay. So, but we are generally just calling them proteins. And we saw that 55% of the cell is made up of protein. So proteins play a very important role. That's why we say the DNA forms the chemical basis for hereditary characteristics, and it contains the instruction from the synthesis of proteins in the ribosomes. So this, this diagram shows the structure of the DNA. But let me just say that the DNA is made up of the sugar and the phosphate. Just for you to revise, okay? DNA is made up of the... It's a double-stranded, okay, structure. And each chain of DNA molecules contains many nucleotides. So it has a deoxyribose, sugar. It has a phosphate. And it can have one of the following organic bases, adenine, guanine, or thymine and cytosine. Uh, this is the DNA magnified view. You can look at it at your own time. This is the DNA magnified view. Okay, and then the gene. The gene is the basic hereditary unit of the cell. What can we see from here? A gene is just a portion of DNA molecules that contains the message or it contains the code for the synthesis of a particular protein Okay, from amino acids. So it is like a book that contains the information necessary for protein synthesis. That's called a gene. Now, remember, there are some genetic disorders which we are going to encounter. Something can go wrong with the, the physiology. So those are called pathological conditions. So some of the genetic uh, disorders, we have single gene mutation. Okay, single gene mutation. Example, sickle cell anemia. We have multifactorial genetic or polygenic disorders such as diabetes, arthritis, coronary heart diseases. These are multifactorial genetic disorders. And then we have chromosomal disorders such as Down syndrome. And then we also have mitochondrial DNA disorders such as Kinsey syndrome. We'll talk about this later in pathology. Okay, this is the RINA. Uh, when you are talking of DNA, it's important just to mention RINA. But the most important thing you need to know that the RINA, it contains long chains of nucleotide units. It is similar to the DNA, but contains ribose instead of deoxyribose. Okay. It contains ribose instead of deoxyribose. You are going to find things like the messenger RNA, transfer RNA, ribosomal RNA. Okay. Now let's look at what we call gene expression. Gene expression. Gene expression is the process by which the information, okay, 
or a code word encoded in the gene is converted into a functional gene product or document of instruction that is used for protein synthesis. Let me repeat. What is gene expression? Gene expression is the process by which the information encoded or embedded in the gene is converted into functional gene product or document of instruction. It's like a thought. You have a thought of writing a book. But you can convert that thought into action. And it will be ev evidenced by a written book. Okay. So that's gene expression. Gene expression involves two steps. There is um, transcription and translation. I won't waste much time here. But it's important to know that transcription means copying. Okay, it indicates the copying of genetic code from DNA to RNA. And translation, translation means protein synthesis. Okay, means protein synthesis. <coughs> 